Welcome to your introduction to graph theory. Something you've never seen before and something I hope you kind of find unique and interesting that this can actually be part of math. Graph theory is all about whether there are routes that can to connect things, whether you can pass through those routes without repeating your route. Um, it can have implications in all different areas of the real world, which we'll discover as we go through this. First of all, we've got to get some graph theory terminology and drift. And so uh, to do that, we're going to, going to draw a graph theory graph of the school, only some basic things. You'll notice up here at the top left, I have the kitchen, main gym, commons, library, and secondary gym. Okay. Each of those dots I have on there is called a vertice vertex or vertices, plural. Okay, so we're going to connect them by showing which rooms can you move from directly from one to the other. And so if I was going to draw this graph, I would say, well, okay, I can go from the commons, I can go direct to the kitchen. That's the only route I go directly from the commons to the kitchen. We are doing only routes within the school, so you can't go outside the building to do these things. From the commons, how many ways are there to get to the main gym? Well, I can go around the stage in each direction. So there's actually two routes. We're going to assume the curtains are closed and you cannot go across the stage. Then, um, if I would like to go commons to the library, well, I can go down the east hallway or I can go down the west hallway. And that will get me to the library. Okay, and is there a direct route from the commons to the secondary gym? No, I can't go directly there. I have to pass through another room first. Okay, is there a main a route from the library to any of these other rooms? And no, you can't go from the library directly to one of the others. Okay, uh, about the only thing I can do is from the main gym, I can go to the secondary gym up by the stage entrances or I can go through the hallway down by the locker room. So there's actually two ways to get to the secondary gym. Each of those lines that I drew is just is called an edge. So those are edges and we have vertices. There are, however, a couple loops in this school. I can, for example, in the main gym, I can go out one of the doors by the door by the boys' locker room, go down the hallway, come back in the door by the girls' locker room. A loop comes back to the same vertex, so I can actually go around and come back to the same place. Are there any other loops we could draw? Well, you could argue that the airlock up here by the front of the commons where you come in the main doors, you can go out the airlock, back in the airlock. So you could also call that a loop if you want to argue with that one. And there you have a possible graph theory diagram of this school based on vertices and edges. Okay. Well, when we talk about our vertices and edges, particularly the vertices are the key, we want to find out what the degree of each vertex is. The degree of a vertex, as you can see by this definition, it's the number of edges that connect to that vertex. So, for example, the kitchen only has one edge connect to it, so its degree is one. The library has two edges. The secondary gym has two edges. Now, the question is, the main gym and the commons, how do you count those loops? Is it one edge or two? Well, since you, all the other edges count twice. If I go from the library to the commons, I'm counting it once at the library, I'm counting it once at the commons. So if you do a loop, you count it as two. So up here at the main gym, I would have one, two, three, four, five, six different edges that go in or out of that, and so I would call that a degree of six. And the commons down here would have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So its degree would be 7. Okay, those degrees are going to be important here shortly. Okay, I also have some examples of what are called parallel edges. Parallel edges are edges that connect the same pair of vertices. 
And so, for example, if I label these two here that go from the library to the commons as edge A and edge B, those are parallel edges because they connect the same two vertices. Do you see another pair of parallel edges on there? And hopefully you're noticing that, yes, up here between the secondary gym and the main gym, I could have edge C and edge D. Those are also examples of parallel edges. Okay. We already, of course, talked about a loop. A loop connects back to the same vertex it started from. Okay. The interesting part is I want you to do a little counting up here. If you count and total up all the degrees in this thing, all the numbers we wrote, 2 plus 2 plus 6 plus 7 plus 1, you'll discover that that adds up to 18. So the total degree of this graph is 18. I also want you to count the number of edges which occurs. So if I count edges here, I have 1, a loop counts as 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I have 9 edges in this thing. So the, and I had a total degree of 18. So yes, it makes sense that the number of edges times 2 gives you your total degree. That's a way to always double check if you've calculated your degree on your vertices right. It should be twice whatever the number of edges you have. Okay, so that's a little uh, theory I, uh, part of it. The first part of your assignment on that handout is to just answer some questions like this looking at the graph they give you. Okay. Now we're going to talk about routes. There are two different kinds of routes we talk about. There are paths and there are circuits. And knowing the difference is really crucial. Paths are routes that start and end at different vertices. Start and end at different places. That's key you understand that. A circuit, on the other hand, if you do a circuit, to complete an electrical circuit, you have to come back to where you started. So our circuits are routes that start and end at the same location. You have to come back to where you started. Okay. Paths start and end at different places. Circuits start and end at the same place. You need to keep that straight. Well, how was graph theory discovered in the first place? It was developed by one of our all-time favorite mathematicians who happened to be li living in the uh, city of Königsberg, and I'm sure Simone can pronounce this better than I just did. Um, it is today known as Kaliningrad and is um, on the kind of the northwest corner of Russia. I have on the next screen a Google Earth picture of Kaliningrad. And you'll notice this is a city where our good friend Leonard Euler once lived. An oiler each day when he needed to think and take a break, he would go out and walk the city streets. And he particularly loved to go down by the river. Uh, you'll see toward, toward the bottom center of this picture, there is a river running through the city. Here's the river. And you'll notice that that river goes around this little island here. And it also goes around this next piece. Unfortunately, we can't see it all, but you'll see that it comes down through here. This is also another island over here. So you have two islands. You got island one, and you got island two. And it had bridges on it. The small island had three bridges that came off of it one to the main north mainland, one to the south mainland, one over to the other island. The larger island over here had multiple bridges. It actually has five. Uh, the one at the bottom down here in the bottom right corner, I actually can't see the whole bottom of this island, but I'm showing you a part. there was another one down there that connected back to the same mainland as this one on the left does. Okay, Euler got to wondering one day if there was a route he could take and walk over all the bridges just one time but never repeat his path. So my challenge to you, and you can stop the recording and come up and try a few times. Do not take, spend more than five minutes on trying this, but some of you can come up and try. Can you find a path to cross all the bridges one time? Now that you're back, 
I'm sure some of you have tried it. Um, I'm going to try it real fast. You can start on both either an island or you can start on the mainland. doesn't matter where you start. But you should have discovered that no matter how you tried, I came across these two. Say I swung over here, came down this one, got off the mainland here, came, got back on the island, and no matter how I end up, I always end up one bridge short. Well, Euler got to wondering if there was some way to know whether it's possible or not. And, of course, walking these bridges took a lot of time and effort, so he wanted to find a way to model this situation. So he created a graph with vertices and edges to represent this situation. So if we come back, actually maybe I need to go forward. Oop. Yes, we're going back. Okay, he created a graph of this particular situation. And to do it, he needed vertices and edges. Island 1 is one of the vertices. Island 2 is our one vertex. Then we need the south mainland and the north mainland on either side of the river. And he made his edges be the bridges. So you'll remember the small island, island one, it goes to the north mainland, it goes to the south mainland, and it goes to the island. The other, the larger island go, has two bridges that go to the north and two bridges that go to the south. So in graph theory, there's an uh, actual graph of the bridge situation. He wanted to know if it was possible to find a route. And so you could once again sit here and try to trace this many times over, and you'll discover no matter how you, hard you try and wherever you start, this particular one doesn't work. You could not find a route that would cross all the bridge edges one time. Edges are bridges. So he got to wondering, well, does the degree have something to do with it? So I want to check out the degree here of each vertex. This is degree 3. The top is degree 3. Over here on the right, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And on the bottom, I have a degree of 3. Well, what do you notice about those numbers? Well, hopefully, somebody said, they're all odd numbers. So, hmm, if they're odd numbers, they have an odd degree or an odd number of edges coming into them, maybe that's why it doesn't work. So, let's add another line to our situation and see what we can do here. So if I try to make, um, I'm going to add down here on the bottom, I'm going to add this extra edge. And so now that's going to make this one over here be 4 and the one on the bottom be a 4. Now is it possible to trace this route? So we're going to try to trace the route here and see. And so I'm going to start here on the 5. That one's really busy, so I'm going to start there. And I'm going to come up to the 3. Except, hold on, this thing is way too fat, so let's try that again with a slightly smaller highlighter so we don't cover up the world here. So I could come from the 5 to the 3, and then um, I'm going to choose to come on around to the 4 now kind of however you choice you want to do it. Um, I'm going to go on down to the bottom. Then perhaps I go over around to the side. I'm going back to the bottom, back to the left, across the center, and back to the top. And you'll notice that I actually got the route covered. And so, hmm, there has to be something to do with the whether the vertices are odd or even. What I want you to notice is where did I start and where did I end? And hopefully if you were paying close attention, you'll notice I started at the busy one. I started over here and I ended up here at the top. I started and I ended at the two odd vertices. You'll notice all the vertices in the middle that made it work were even. And that's exactly how you know. 
If you want to be able to do a pass, notice we started and ended at different locations. If you want to be able to do a pass, you can only have two odd vertices, your start and end point. Everything else has to be even. If you want to do a circuit, get back to where you started, what do you think has to happen? Well, if you want to get back to where you started, then everything has to be even. So you have just discovered how to work Euler paths and Euler circuits. Euler paths, notice Euler starts with E. So Euler starts with E. He, Euler paths have to cross every edge, every edge, also started with E, one time. But they have to start and end at different vertices. If you notice, to have it work, you have only two odd vertices. The rest have to be even. Your route had to start and end at the odd vertices. Okay, since I'm over time, I'm going to stop it right here.